Hey, good morning. We are at Twisted Sage Studios today. Had some other issues with computers and cameras this morning. So um, hopefully you guys can hear all right here this morning. All right. Yeah, let's make sure everybody can hear okay. Awesome. All right. Hey, thanks, Anna. Um, so we have people from everywhere as usual today. Philippines, a jumbo and sod. Oh yeah. Sod's always on here. Sod's always on there. Yeah. Billy's going to say hi, sod. Hello. I'm going back to work now. <laughs> and Samson. Hey. Oh yes. Well, Thank you guys for all being here. Um, so I suppose we'll start with going into the heart this morning. Again, just going to the physical heart, breathing in that little light of earth, breathing in the light of creation. All right. Well, curious how, how everybody's doing. I know it's been kind of a strange, strange time, stranger than usual. Um, so we don't have any questions today that came through on email. And so if you guys have any questions that are live here, please put it over here in the questions tab as usual. And um, we do have some things I'd like to talk about here today. Some important things we're doing here at the studio um, with pricing and some fun stuff. So I'm gonna give you guys all a great heads up today um to be able to purchase tools before we end up raising prices here tonight which um it's something that we have to do and we're going to be making some drastic changes in our pricing structure because previously you know throughout the years we've always been trying to make these tools as cheap as possible get them to you as cheap as possible i mean we've been pretty much a zero profit company for this entire time um you know and our wholesalers don't really make anything. They're in it for more of the altruistic reasons. Um, you know, so we don't have huge discounts on, you know, and that's why we don't do very big discounts on sales because um, a lot of our wholesalers are actually purchasing below manufacturing price. Um, you know, so it's, it's something that we've been doing the time studies here. We've been trying everything we can to create that flow enough to to keep rolling here but we are having to do some drastic shifts in our pricing structure so here within about 24 hours everything's going to shift so you guys are the only ones that have the heads up on this and we'll be sending out a newsletter here um probably tonight we'll be shifting all the prices um so pretty much through today is is pretty much like a wholesale price day. Um, so anyway, that's where we are at with that. Um, and yeah, please do feel free to drop your questions over here. But um, yeah, so anyway, prototypes are being fun. We Lucas made this one here the other day, yesterday. I can't wait to get this in the silver. Um, hey, and while we're here at the shop, let me grab a few more prototypes to show you guys. So this is one that's getting sent out today, this prototype generator, which is made with that triangle wire. So those are pretty fun. But yeah, this one's getting sent out in a prototype um, subscription service today. And then we have a Gaia sphere that's made of the triangle wire. And we have this super heavy duty one. This one is something else. I mean, this thing, I'm not sure how many pounds it weighs, but this is a heavy duty triangle wire Gaia sphere. Um, 
So just some of the things we're playing with. And, you know, and since we've been doing this prototype subscription service, it's it's allowed everybody here at the studios to start getting into more of their um, creative endeavors. Like this is one that Isaac made. And um, he just took one of our old Galactic Ascension rings and hammered it flat and um, welded the Hedica in there. And to me, that's quite the beautiful pendant. I'd almost rather keep that one myself, but that will probably go out to our prototype subscription service as well. Um, so anyway, yeah, everybody here is having fun playing with that whole concept. All right, we'll get over here to the questions. So Kendall asks, I have placed the everything ring over the wings of talk. Was wondering if you know how they will react together. Um, so basically with the everything ring, um, that is hard to say. The everything ring is kind of a wild card. It just depends on, um, you know, what you need, what, what the space needs. I mean, it's the everything ring is just has so much in it that it's hard to say what comes through. And so for one person putting the everything ring on a wings of talk, it's going to feel different than another person. So if I try it, um, you know, it's going to be different than if somebody else does. So, you know, and that's the beautiful thing is to just experiment with these. And then too, Kendall, when you're using that everything ring or anybody, when you're using that everything ring, um, a lot of it is your conscious intent when you're placing it there of what you would like it to do, because it's, it is kind of a support ring, um, you know, that works with the, the conscious. Anna, I need to choose between the Divine I Am Generator, the Chalice, and the Chalice Tech class. What would be your suggestion? Mm, I'd say the Divine I Am Generator. It is really amazing. That's one of my favorite tools so far. Though the Chalice Tech class, <laughs> that is a tough one, Anna, because I love the the Chalice Tech clasps. Um, but I, I still feel that the Divine I Am Generator would be a lot more support to you and everybody around. It's it's a pretty amazing tool and it will take you farther and do more than than the Heka Clasp will. Though the Heka Clasp is just nice to have on the person. Um, but I still feel the generator would do a lot more for you. Um, Jumbo, the Twisted Sage site says that the regeneration generators have been updated with Divine I Am Energetics. Does that also apply to the regeneration rings? No, actually, so it's just those generators, those specific generators. So in, in thank you for bringing that up, Jumbo. So basically any of the um, regeneration generators that are out there, they are still regeneration generators. It's just this last batch that we made um, that we were putting on clearance that we shifted them to the Divine I Am. Um, so it's just the ones that we have on closeout that are carrying that divine I am energetics. Um, but so then also Jumbo goes on to ask what other tools have been updated with the divine I am energetics. So here's how we're seeing it working is, is that if you have, this is a harmonizer ring. Um, if you have a harmonizer ring or any ring, Actually, I like to use the the um, the golden fire. So if you have like a golden fire Wi-Fi ring and you can feel that golden fire in it, but yet there is the layers of the chalice energy is in there as well as the divine I am energy. And so if you have a golden fire harmony, it doesn't matter what it is or when it was created, it is going to be carrying through with it the energetics of the chalice and the divine I am. And, um, but it's not going to be at the forefront and tangible. It'll be there kind of like a supporting field. Um, but so if you have that Wi-Fi ring, that's the golden fire, and you can still access that divine I am and that chalice energy in there. Um, just like you can still access the energetics, the harmony of any other ring that was created prior to the golden fire. It is all within there as well. Um, so how I've been kind of seeing that things might possibly flow at some point in time and how things are right now is, is that that golden fire ring will 
shift and grow with you. So if you're attracted to the golden fire, and that's it, is that we have to keep every one of these levels of tools here for people to access because it's an access point. So let's say if you're going to access and sorry to create it on this hierarchy, I really don't, you know, I'm not trying to say that one is higher or better than the other per se, but it is kind of a hierarchical, let's say, just for um, mental sake. So let's say that we have this hierarchy, your harmony ring here, your golden fire here. So basically with your harmony ring that you have, it will grow and shift with you now. It used to be that a lot of the tools, um, we might start to grow out of them. But with this divine I am energetics and the um, and the chalice, mainly the divine I am energetics, that harmony ring or the golden fire ring will continue to expand and grow with you. Um, so that's how we're seeing all of the newer tools coming through. Well, all the tools right now is, is that they're going to expand and grow more with you than they ever have before because that divine I am energetics that is in them. Um, hopefully that all came out right here. Um, Jumbo, any plans on creating a wings of talk pendant? You know, that's really not a bad idea. Um, it's it's kind of tough right now with that size. It's a pretty small and tedious to work with that because we have to grind the tips of each one of those little steel rods. The tips have to be ground so that everything fits in there, right? Um, and then it's all soldered together. So finding a smaller size might be a tedious task, but I do like that idea of a Wings of Talk pendant, though, Jumbo. Um, JR, can I put a clear coat on the copper tools to prevent the patina from developing? Um, I tell you, JR, if I, I'm doing an experiment right now, actually, um, and we've experimented with, with this through the years of trying to find something to put on to the rings, and a lacquer style of finish is about the only thing that, you know, all the research and everything says now with us i have a, a hood ornament i have a activator that sits on the hood of my car i've always kept the activators as hood ornaments and i dip them in echopoxy well even with that echopoxy that that epoxy that covers it um it still seems to weather because if you get any little cracks or anything in there then the moisture gets in and it really makes it look kind of terrible because part of it is patinaed and part of it's still shiny. So over the course of like a year or two being in the weather, that has actually gone through and patinaed the whole thing despite of that epoxy. Now I've been trying another experiment as well is on the back of my motorcycle, I have a um, ascension pyramid, a mini ascension pyramid on the back of the bike. And we clear coated it with just the rattle can spray, uh, the clear coat, um, gosh, I'm trying to think, enamel, I believe is what those are, isn't it, enamel. And that has been holding up pretty well. Now, any of those coatings that you put on will hold up as long as there's no physical abrasion. And that's the thing is like any time that that gets scratched, it ends up that it's, um, Oh, hey everybody, um, that it ends up that you just get that patina in there. So as far as a clear coat, really do not have a grasp on that yet of what a good clear coat would be. Um, enamel of some flavor is, is what we're feeling, but as far as anything that you would wear as jewelry, it will wear off. A lot of the costume jewelry that you that you'll get um, does have clear coating on it, but it wears off as well pretty quick. Uh, Renard, I recently watched a clip of Slim Sperling describing the paramagnet paramagnetism from passing smaller ring through larger rings. What are your experiences with the concept and movement with the rings in general? So Philip Callahan, who was the one who, um, you know, he's an expert in paramagnetism. And when he did studies on the tensor rings, he found that the, um, that the tensor rings create the, the most paramagnetic, 
properties of anything he ever tested, which is pretty huge. Um, so when you are, so we have played with that through the years of, of bringing like a coil inside of a ring and how it changes the field. Um, so Renard, I'm not, not really well versed in how that looks. I just know that it does create an entire different um, feel and flow to the energetics when you start to introduce rings inside of the other. Um, so I'm sorry, I cannot really say too much about that concept of movement with the rings, um, except for there are so many of the tools that we have that love movement. Um, Mary would always say that any of the tools love to move and that's, that's her experience and perception with them. Um, you know, when we hang up, when we get a Taurus, usually we'll have a Taurus hanging and spinning somewhere because it totally moves the energy. A Taurus spinning is phenomenal. Um, so yeah, if you have a Taurus, I would suggest getting one of those little $6 spinners that take the D batteries or you can get the kind with the plug-in off of Amazon. They're like a disco ball spinner or a wind spinner. Um, and you hang a Taurus on there. It is amazing what it does to shift energies. Um, some of the other ones that I've liked to spin over the years that we've noted are like the, um, the activator has been one and just rings in general there's a lot of people who do like to spin any of their tools because there is something that it does with the environment and that flow for sure and i know you guys can use your imagination to see that as well um, let's see uh, another question here could you explain a little more in depth on the blue light and an infinite light pendant? And how does it work together with the alchemist pendant? And does the alchemist pendant have the blue light too? So that um, the infinite light pendant, when when we created that regeneration ring that goes with that infinite light pendant out of silver, that is when we noted that um, that blue light coming through. We didn't note it, notice it in the copper rings. But when we first made that silver regeneration ring, that is where we saw that blue light. And that blue light comes from a universe out of duality. That blue light, as it comes in, it brings your light in more. It acts like an interfacing tool to bring that more into the physical. So the, the that blue light on the infinite light pendant is because of that regeneration ring. Now with the alchemist, rings, any of the alchemist rings, um, like the divine I am, the chalice, the harmonizer, they too are carrying that energetics. I mean, that's because every ring that we create builds on the other one. So the alchemist set does still carry that energetics, but that's not necessarily what's on the forefront. Um, so when you're using the alchemist pendant, um, you know, you can still bring through that blue light with intent if that's what you are wanting to work with. And that's the beautiful thing about all these rings is that with your conscious and intent and awareness that you can bring through whatever it is that you want through these, um, all the different frequencies and properties of all the past rings of plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms, um, you know, all of that are accessible within any of the rings, um, any of the alchemist rings through that intention. Um, and then let's see. And then how will it work together with the alchemist pendant? So the infinite light pendant, um, we, yeah, actually adding that infinite light pendant with the alchemist pendant, um, there has been quite a few people who have noted that that's pretty phenomenal, especially, you know, when we just had the first two rings, which were the binary infusion pendant, um, with the first two rings, people, a lot were using that infinite light pendant with that binary infusion. And so once we added in this divine, I am, it works 
you know, it just brings a whole nother level to it. So they do harmonize and bring through something pretty phenomenal, the infinite light and the alchemist. Um, let's see, JR, do you sell the silver chain that you're wearing with the alchemy pendants? Is that the same one on the website? Mm, you know, that's a good question. Actually, um, JR, this particular chain is slightly heavier gauge than the ones that come with the alchemist pendant. Um, they're very comparable. You know, you have to sit them side by side to really see the difference in in, in the size of them because they, they are pretty comparable. This one's just slightly heavier. This is the one that goes with the um, the Taurus pendant um, is, is this little slightly heavier one. Um, but the ones that we have on sale that we sell on the website for the sterling silver, um, they are very similar to this. Let's see. Um, another question. I placed a golden fire generator in the center of a nine inch harmonizer ring. What kind of energetics can we expect from this setup? So the harmonizer ring has been a phenomenal one for basically um, amplifying for amplifying all the other frequencies and to bring them more into the physical because that's what the harmonizer ring does is it brings the energetic more to the physical um so when you're using that with the um with that golden fire generator it is going to amplify but it's also going to amplify the effects of of the generator well let's see not amplify the effects I should say that the generator's two and a half mile sphere of influence, when you bring that um, when you bring that harmonizer ring into there, it is going to send that harmonizer ring frequency out on the waves too. So basically, it's kind of like the whole concept of a generator that whatever you put with the generator, it's going to be working to broadcast that. But the harmonizer ring is also amplifying. Um, have you ever spun a Taurus inside of a pyramid? <laughs> well, actually, yeah. So our our um, booth that we have, our 10-foot ascension, well, our 13-foot tall 10 by 10 base ascension pyramid booth with the giant Taurus, the 26-inch Taurus, that spins. Um, so we always have that on a giant disco ball spinner, and that is always spinning when we have it set up at shows and such. Um, but as far as inside of the, the Ascension Pyramids, no, I haven't done that, Renard, and I think that would be phenomenal. Um, again, I think those little motors that take a D battery are only like six or seven bucks on Amazon. Uh, it used to be years ago. And um, that D battery will last for a couple of weeks of that thing spinning. So anyway, hey, there's another thing. Um, one of my friends, Valerie Solheim, she is the one who is with uh, Bees Healing Bees. She, um, old friend of Slim's, um, and then she was also hung out with the crowd with, um, um, oh man, the name escapes me. Well, just the rest of Slim's crew. Um, so she worked with Slim and, and, and the entire crew there, all the people who were there in the beginning working with the tensor rings because Slim had a, a, a circle of people that he worked with. And um, Valerie was one of these. Anyway, Valerie contacted me this morning asking me about um, her new electric car. She said that Slim told them years ago how batteries, how, how tensor rings will keep a battery working at 100% efficiency. Not sure exactly what that means, but from what I understand is, is um, from, from her is that it keeps your battery life longer. Um, not only your charge, but your entire battery life, because you know how batteries over time, like a lithium battery, will lose its um, capacity to hold a charge. And so she's saying that Slim used to tell them that to use the rings with the batteries. So maybe if you get your spinner, put a ring around your spinner too. Um, and then if you guys ever try any of these things, would love to hear some feedback if you ever decide to try to, um, you know, use a battery and a ring together and try to do an experiment with that. I think that would be a phenomenal experiment to see. Uh, let's see. Can you explain the difference between the Gaia sphere and the divine I am generator? 
Yeah, Lawrence. Um, so the generators and the Gaia spheres in general are two different critters, really. Um, the tensor field generators that have the four rings in them are simply a, they're just a tensor field generator. That's all they are. Hey, Mike, you're on candy camera today. Sorry. No, no, this is Mike. He is, he's, he's phenomenal at what he does. He's also the guy that helps us with our time studies, but he also does all the up close polished grind work. And um, yeah, we're lucky to have this guy because he's helped us out with those time studies so much. So that's been, that's been good. Um, but as far as the um, generator and the Gaia sphere, so the generator is more just kind of a ball of sunshine and it's, it, it's just a tool. It's, it's, it's a frequency emitter. It's, it's a carrier, um, you know, antenna transmitter, all that. But a Gaia sphere is more, more consciousness connected with the Gaia sphere because the Gaia sphere truly is connected in with the heart of Gaia. So to tell you a difference, like, so let's give you an example for the difference between a golden fire Gaia sphere and a golden fire tensor field generator. A golden fire generator is just going to expand out. It goes out farther than what the field, field of the Gaia sphere is. But the, that field, no, um, no, I guess that's not true. They're very similar. Um, so that field of the um, tensor field generator, as it expands out, it's, um, it's doing all the great things that the golden fire does. Now, when you bring that golden fire into a Gaia sphere, it is then, it does everything that that generator does, but then it is doing things like connecting the heart of everybody within its field. So it does a heart connection. So whenever I go to do speaking engagements, things like that, I like to bring along a golden fire Gaia sphere because it just holds that container of all the people together. Um, everybody is together holding that space on a soul level. Um, so the Gaia spheres are contain a lot more consciousness. Also Gaia is, is, is present in the Gaia spheres. I mean, it, it's working with the heart of the earth. Um, so as far as, any of the Gaia, so this is actually a divine I am Gaia sphere, our prototype ones. Um, we have not done readings on these or anything like that, which is kind of the thing that we're working with this prototype subscription service is to kind of get, a, have everybody get kind of a feel for them. And as we put out the prototypes and people interact, I still think that's going to help create that finalized tool. But anyway, with the divine I am generator though, the divine I am generator is actually, I would say contain more consciousness, your consciousness than a golden fire Gaia sphere does because the divine I am is simply the light of the soul. So the divine I am generator, um, you know, it's so to compare the divine I am generator to a Gaia sphere, um, I, you know, they're, they're both going to bring through the consciousness, your consciousness. Um, but as far as, yeah, so yeah, I'm just going to stop there with that. And hopefully that kind of answered the question there, Lawrence, on the Gaia sphere versus the divine I am generator, um, because it just kind of depends on the frequency of the Gaia sphere. Um, because every guy is fear frequency does something just a little bit different, but they are all connected with the heart of the earth. Let's see. So just checking here over on chat. Um, yeah. So I'll tell you, there's a lot going on right now with everybody and everything. And, um, you know, it's just definitely going to get more chaotic. So the more we can, you know, keep in our practices and I've, I've been bad about that. And I'm just now coming back to stepping into my power again. Um, you know, as, as we go through all of the many layers of transitions. So as far as what's going on right now with the websites, we have, um, 
several people that we're working with on the website to work with the information. We we're actually working with a company that's going to be doing some ad stuff for us and help us to get our website, um, you know, more Google friendly, working with the Google AI and all that fun stuff. Um, because we need to get out there more. Um, we, we really need to, to expand ourselves more because, um, we kind of ran into a choice here with the business was we either step back and, and bring everything down notches or else we step up and it's a time to step up. And so that's what we're doing is we are ready to do some serious, um, expansion with, with everything, trying to get more information out there. Um, because that's the thing too, is that the pricing of these tools also pays for other things like, um, you know, all the time and energy that we put into other creation. That's not the tools such as, you know, 50 questions Fridays really want to get into doing more video work. Uh, we need to get going on our product, um, webinars again, you know, things like that. So we have a lot on our plates and we want to keep expanding and growing. And so, the only way we're going to be able to keep expanding and growing is to to stay here and to be able to keep our employees um, and and keep moving. So that's why we are creating this price increase. And um, so I'd I'd say that if you're looking at any tools that have been on your in your sites, um, I'd say the next 12 hours is the perfect time to grab them because um, we're going to be raising prices up to to where for right now everything's basically on sale um, big time. So anyway, um, we, we want to continue to be here. We want to continue to to grow and to support everybody and everything. And we've just been in this space of struggle for too long and we cannot operate the way that we need to in that space of struggle because i tell you we are all infinitely abundant and the only thing that prevents that abundance from coming here is our blocks to it so the more that we surrender the more that we're here and the more that we're doing the work the more abundance we can allow and so please do keep that in your thoughts um that perception that abundance is infinite the universe wants to support us. It is our own blocks that are keeping the abundance out. And with that, there's a lot of the stuff that we are working on clearing out, like the YouTube channel. Um, you know, I got to clear out all the stuff on entities because <laughs> that's old world. We don't do that work anymore. Um, you know, that we used to. And so, Pretty much we are reinventing our purpose and who we are and what we're here for, because that's kind of been my past year of why I've been in such a um, roller coaster ride is because for the past decade, I've been working at um, the clearing work on the planet. And that's not part of what we're doing anymore. Um, there's so many things that are going on in this world that are not part of what we're doing anymore. And so it, you know, and that's like, um, all the causes, all the, all the, everything. Um, there's just a lot out there that is a distraction and takes us away from the things that we should be focusing on, which is here and expanding from here. Um, Anna, any tip to help reduce these chaotic times? Yeah, we're going to do a meditation here in a minute. Um, April, just put my alchemist pendant with the wings of talk. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, the wings of talk is, is something that's been coming up a lot here recently, too. And um, for, for me... So I'm not sure if, if it's getting ready to do an upgrade or not, but if it upgrades, we're not going to, you know, we'll upgrade the energetics and that will go to all of the wings of talk. JR, how much will the prices go up by tomorrow? Um, hmm, significant. 
some things may double in price. Some things may, because there are tools that we have been selling that are at cost. And then if we ever have a sale, we're selling below cost. Um, and looking at, and so this has been a tough, tough choice to figure this out because um, we all sat down and I'm so glad that Brenda was here the other day because Brenda helped to create a space and put this into a perspective that we could all agree on because, you know, my business manager, Billy, who you saw here at the beginning, you know, she, she wants to see a stay in business. And so she worries all the time because, because of what she sees on the back end. Um, you know, sometimes we can't make payroll. That's been tough. And so my sister Brenda came in and Brenda looked at everything energetically and she says, no, you got to double your prices. We're not truly doubling prices, but that was the suggestion from creation. Double your prices because we have to stay here and we have to keep expanding and we can't um, dim ourselves here. We, we have to shine brighter than ever right now. So um, I appreciate your guys' understanding on this um, and support with this because we do need to start shining brighter here. And um, yeah, <laughs> the world needs as much light as it can right now. So Anna, any tip to reduce these chaotic time to reduce these chaotic times? Yes. Let's do a meditation. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, we're going to do a meditation. Okay, here we go. Go into your heart. Grounding to the core of the earth, to the heart of the earth. Grounding to the heart of creation. As we bring all that light in together, that brings in your light. Now imagine your light expanding in your heart and expanding expanding into every cell of the heart. Now bring together all that you are throughout all time, bringing everything from the past, present, future, <sighs> aligning all that you are in this here now moment in the heart. <sighs> As you bring that into the heart, now expand that out, everything that you are, Expand out into every cell in your body. We're staying within the body, expanding your light into every molecule in between every cell. Now then, imagine yourself in your home. Find that place in your home, whether it's your favorite chair or your bed. This is something that Brenda did with us the other day that was powerful. Imagine yourself sitting in that chair or laying in your bed and expanding that light from your heart into that piece of furniture. Just raising the frequency and vibration of that piece of furniture. Now imagine expanding that more throughout your entire home into every little nook and cranny and molecule of everything within your home. Your heart light, the light of the earth and the light of creation, all working together to shift the vibration of your home. Awesome. So what do we do in these chaotic times? Stay in the heart. Maybe you want to stay home now. If you're just going to be at home, <laughs> you might have a nice sacred space there. But just stay in the heart. And if you cannot look at the chaos without transforming it, don't look at it. If you look at the chaos and it affects you, don't look at it. But if you are standing in your light and your power enough that you can look at the chaos without judgment, and send your light to it. That's what we need. But if you're not able to look at that chaos without it affecting you, then don't look at it until you can be in your light. 
and it's going to get a lot more chaotic in this world. So this is a great practice to start right now is to be in that heart, bring your soul in alignment through all that it is and it was here now, expand it into every cell of your being, then look at the chaos and look at it with heart, without judgment. Knowing that the chaos is absolutely beautiful and perfect, we need the chaos to uncover, shake up all the things that no longer serve us on this planet and they need to be let go of and we can't let go of them unless we can see them and they're untangled so the chaos is shaking things up untangling allowing things to be able to let go so the chaos is absolutely beautiful it is needed um and how we can work with ourselves first and then with the chaos after that All right, you guys, um, I'm going to get going here so everybody can get back to to their work here, too. So um, we'll see you guys probably next week here, I believe. And then the week after that, we'll be in, um, gosh, I think the week after that, we'll be in Clinton, Iowa, doing doing our event there. So anyway... um, Keep an eye on the website. We're going to be doing a lot of great things with the website here in the near future. We're doing updating content. Um, We're going to create a whole new feel and flow to it um, and get back to the original putting information out because I don't want the website to be about sales. It's not about the tools. It's about putting out this information, doing the work and helping all of creation. So, um, that's kind of where we're going to get our focus back to again. All right, you guys take care and we'll see you next time.